Hi, Michael Wolf, PGI Compiler Engineer, back for installment four of our series of short videos on your first introduction to parallel programming using OpenACC. In our last video, we used the PGI compilers with TA Tesla colon managed. So we were doing parallel programming on the GPU and letting the driver and the operating system manage data traffic between the host and the GPU. In this installment, we're going to use manual data management. We're going to put in data directives to manually manage the data traffic between the host and the GPU. Let's take a look at our program. It's the same C++ program we had before. And we're going to try to use manual data management. What happens if I don't put in any data directives? Let's try building this program first. In this case, I'm going to use T equals Tesla with the CC60 because I'm still compiling for Pascal. And the mInfo equals Excel messages. So I get the informational messages from the compiler. See momentarily why that's important. And what we see here is the compiler is trying to implicitly determine what data needs to be moved to and from the GPU. It's able to in some cases. In the second loop, for instance, it's able to implicitly determine that the X old and X new vectors need to be copied into the, from the host to the GPU. What it's unable to do is determine how much of the A array needs to be copied over. And the reason is, in C++, A isn't a two-dimensional array. It's a single-dimensional array being indexed with a two-dimensional index expression. It's just too complex for the compiler. So let's go back inside this program. What we see here is the A array here is indexed with I times a multiplier plus J. That's too complex for the compiler. So we're going to put in an explicit data directive for A here. It's input only, so we only need to copy it from the host to the device. We don't need to copy the results back. And I need to move the whole array over there. What we will find is the compiler is able to implicitly determine the bounds for, in this case, the X old vector and the X new vector, and the right-hand side B vector. So while it's running, it's going to take a little bit longer than we might expect. It seems to be running quite a bit more slowly than what we had before. What we have here is the explicit copy in for A, the implicit copy out for X new, the implicit copy in for X old and B in the first loop, and then the implicit copy in of X old and X new for the residual loop. But it still is running pretty slow. It took six, more than six and a half seconds, whereas before it was running in what, 2.9 seconds. What's the difference here? Well, let's bring up our profiler. And we're going to uh, start a new profile session and run it as we did before with just 200 iterations. And we're going to see here is a heck of a lot of data traffic between the host and the GPU. And the reason is, every time we enter one of those loops, it allocates and copies data over to the device, runs the kernel, and then copies the results back and deallocates the data. Goes to the next loop, allocates and copies data over to the device, runs the kernel, deallocates, and removes the data. And it's doing that every time around the, the uh, convergence loop and for each of the two loops inside that program. So there's a lot more data traffic than we want, and that's very expensive. In this particular case, I'm running on an x86. This was a Haswell with a Pascal. So the connection between the two is a PCI Express bus, which is a really fast I.O. bus. It's not a very good memory bus. If I dive into the program here, let's get down to where we're doing one iteration of the loop. So this is uh, basically one iteration. And here's the mem copy. You'll see that's 320 kilobytes. So my data type was float, so that's 40,000 elements. That's my 200 by 200 A array. This is my X vector, my X old vector, and my B vector. And down here is where I'm copying out the X new vector. And then I go ahead and immediately copy those two back in before I do my convergence tests, my convergence loop. So that was the C++ program. Let's take a quick look at the Fortran program and see if we have any different uh, behavior. The Fortran program is exactly the same as it was before. I have the same open ACC directives that I had for the C++ program with the addition of the private declarations for the variables that are uh, private to the body of the loop because I don't have loop scope 
declarations as I do in C++. In this case, when I build the program for Pascal, the compiler is successfully able to determine up there, you'll just see it scrolled off, but we'll go back to it. It's able to determine the uh, size of the input arrays A and B and the X old input array and the output array X new. Now, this is interesting in that here the compiler is able to determine that X new is assigned and the old values are never needed. So it only needs to allocate the data on the device and bring the values back over from the device back to the host. But still, um, because Fortran has real two-dimensional arrays, it's able to determine the bounds for both dimensions, each dimension of the arrays. Same thing for the second loop. Uh, and the time it took here is, uh, uh, let's see here, 4.24 seconds, where before the program was running in 0 0.5 seconds, just over half a second. Now it's running, oh, gee, it looks like eight times slower. That's pretty grim. It's exactly the same problem that we had with the uh, C++ program. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, that's your next challenge. What I need to do is insert a data clause, a data directive, around that convergence loop. So you try that in your, in your version of the program and see what the performance difference is. And you want to compare two things, the performance with the optimized program against this version with all the data movement and the performance of the optimized program against the version with the managed memory. Come back for installment five and we'll take a look at my solution to that problem.